All right, in continuing, I want us to see the difference between what we're doing now, where we have sine of theta equals something, and what we did before, where we did inverse sine. This is where technically you could have an infinite amount of answers. But we've said, I only want all the answers between 0 and 360. So where are the y values equal to root 3 over 2? Where the y values the big ones on the 30, 60, 90, and so I draw my 30, 60, 90, and I want my y's to be the big ones. So at 60 degrees, and this one's 120. Now, we take both of these this time because we're not doing inverse sine of root 3 over 2. We're just saying, well, what angles in between 0 and 360 give me this as the y value? Same way, cosine. Where's the cosine? A positive root 2 over 2. When we have a root 2 over 2, that's the 45, and the cosine is a x value. So where's the x also positive? Down here. So at a 45 degree angle, and at the 315 degrees. Tangent. So just like we sort of finished up the last one, where's the tangent? y over x. So is it root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half? or 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. Again, we want the root 3 on the bottom, and so it's going to be this one. So the tangent is the y is the short side, 1 half. So that's positive divided by positive, and if we have a negative divided by a negative, we'll also get a positive tangent, so over here. So at 30 degrees, and at 30 degrees past 180, which would be 210 degrees. Alright, so let's keep going. Solve for zero, uh, solve for theta between 0 and 2 pi. So now we're working in radians. So all of our answers are going to be in radians. The sine value, or the y value, where is it equal to negative 1? Well, only one spot where it's equal to negative 1, and that's straight down, because this is 0, negative 1 down here. So we're talking about 90 degrees, so that's a pi over 2, and we have 1, 2, 3 of them, 3 pi over 2. Where's the cosine? Equal to negative 1 half. Where's the x value? The short side and negative of the 30, 60, 90, remembering our 1 half root 2 over 2 and all that jazz. X's are negative on the left-hand side, and so I draw both of my 30, 60, 90's like this. And so I know it's going to be over 3, because 60's are one-third um, of 180. So we've got 2 pi over 3, 1, 2, and then this is 1 past 3 pi over 3, so this is 4 pi over 3. If you need to think of it first in degrees, and then translate, or um, just convert, that's fine. Where's the tangent of theta undefined? We've talked about the graphing, and so you can think of this as where are the, um, where are the asymptotes. What w combination of y's and x's give me an undefined? Well, when I have an x that's 0, it's undefined. And so, because I can't divide by 0. So where is x 0? Well, straight up and straight down. Because I haven't gone left and right in both cases. So pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And so again, the big difference is before what we were doing, they were only giving us one answer. Now what they're doing is they're giving us multiple answers between 0 and 2 pi, and this is really getting us ready for the solving part. Up here, inverse sine of negative 1 half only gave us answers between negative 90 and 90. So, how do you find that second angle? Really, it's all about a reflection game, but I want to talk about that. In your calculator, the calculator for a positive sign will give you this angle. How do you find the other angle that's positive? 
just reflect it over because the y is also positive over here. So you can do 180 minus the angle to find the second angle. Now, you're welcome to memorize that. I just like thinking, let's reflect it over here, and that's the same thing, 180 minus that. So if it's negative, the calculator is going to give you this one that's down here. So let's say it gave you negative 30. How can you find the other one? Well, the other one's going to be negative 2, and so it's going to be reflected over this way. And so that rule still applies. It'll be 180 minus your negative theta. So 180 minus your negative 30 will actually add 30 to it and get 210. So you're still subtracting, so you can always think of that rule if you want. But I think of reflecting. Think of this as your reference angle 30, and then add 30 to 180. Cosine. Cosine's positive over here, and so a positive cosine will give you this angle. How do you find the where else it's positive? Well, x's are positive on the right-hand side, and so if you subtract your positive angle from 360, 360 minus your angle to find your second one. If your cosine is negative, it's going to show up over here it's going to give you, say, 150. How do you find the other one? Well, it's going to reflect. So how do you find your other one? Well, just go this way with it. Do 360 minus your angle. It makes a lot of sense. Again, you're welcome to memorize this, but just imagine, if I have 150 this way, let's do 360 minus 150 and it'll get, get us this angle. Tangent. Tangents are positive in this quadrant because a positive divided by a positive, y divided by x. Keep that in mind. Tangents are also positive when it's a negative divided by a negative over here. And so this is going to be a 180 plus whatever your angle is. Again, your angle this way, your angle this way. If you get tangent that's negative, it's going to give you this negative angle, a negative angle down here. And we want it to reflect up here. And so this is really subtracting from 180. And so if you do 180 plus your negative angle, you'll still be in the right spot. So now we're going to go on and actually try this. So where is the sine value negative, po negative root 2 over 2? This is what we were doing before. Negative root 2 over 2. Where's the y value? Negative, and that's a 45 degree angle because it's the root 2 over 2. From 0 to 360, so that's 180 plus 45 that's the 225, and then 315, 45 degrees less than 360. So, now cosine of 0.4. If you do inverse cosine in the calculator of 0.4, what does the calculator give us? Inverse cosine of 0.4, 66.4 degrees. 66, we're up here. Where else is the x value going to be a positive 0.4? Reflect it down because our x's are positive on the right hand side. So I'm going to do 360 minus 66.4 and get my second angle 293.6 degrees. Both of those. And so again, we just reflected it. Where's the tangent equal to 5? First thing I'm going to do, inverse tangent of 5. Because it's not a unit circle value. I'm going to do inverse tangent of 5. Typing it right in. 
78.7 degrees. So, tangent is positive right here. Y divided by X is positive divided by positive, and the other one, negative divided by negative. So if you have this, let's just do 180 plus the 78.7 and get 258.7 degrees. And so there's our second angle. And again, we're finding all of the angles between 0 and 360. Next set of examples, only thing that's changing is that it's in radians. And so we have a little trouble with this because we're comparing it to pi and 2 pi, but it's really not that bad. Do it the same way, inverse sine, 0.75. And so one thing you want to check is that you're in radian mode. Hit the mode button, highlight radians by hitting enter. Inverse sine of 0.75. 0.85. So, you have to be thinking that this is up here. And how do I know that? Well, sine is positive, and the calculator only ever gives me angles between negative 90 and 90. And I'm just estimating that. But where else is sine positive? Over here. So, I'm going to relative, subtract this from pi. Do pi minus 0.85. So pi minus 0.85, and I'll get 2.29. And we have our second answer. Where's the cosine value equal to zero? Well, I want to know where's the x value equal to zero. Up here, down here. If you want to, you can type it in the calculator, but what if we don't have our calculator? We can still do it. Cosine value at pi over 2, and at 3 pi over 2. Now, this says tangent equals root 3. I want to change this to a negative root 3 and do inverse tangent of negative root 3. So inverse tangent of negative square root of 3. And I'm going to see show you what the calculator gets us. Negative 1.05. Now, we know what this is going to be, and I'm going to do it both ways because we already know that inverse tangent of root 3 is when the y value is bigger, negative root 3 over 2, divided by 1 half. Or the other way, positive root 3 over 2, divided by negative 1 half. And so this is going to represent 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. And so, where does this 5 pi over 3 come from if our calculator gives us negative 1.05? 5 pi over 3 is 5.23. So if we subtract 2 pi, this is going to be the coterminal that the calculator gives us with our 5 pi over 3. Um, and how do we get our other angle, given what the calculator gives us? Just do pi minus the 1.05, and that'll give us the 2 pi thirds, 5 pi thirds. So, that's inverse functions.